Hello and welcome to this two minute tutorial on WKO5 testing targets. Today's topics we will cover finding your normalized residuals and test targets, what is a normalized residual, and how to use them. All right, let's jump right into WKO. The simplest way to find them is to open the athlete. Um, this I'm using the WKO5 advanced cycling view as you can see up here open the athlete, select the power duration model dashboard, and just scroll to the bottom, and kind of almost all the way to the bottom, and you will see a chart called normalized residuals for testing for cycling. That's how you find it. Make sure that you're set to 90 days over in your right-hand explorer if you want, if you're using 90 days as the basis, just to make sure all your numbers match up. Now, to be clear, normalized residuals are in its simplest definition, distance from zero. So if you look at the dashed red line, that is your power duration curve, right? So let's just say power duration curve is 0.0. It's th if they're below, like this one's almost negative 10 here at one second, that's a low point. That means your mean max power curve is significantly below your power duration curve in that area. If it's above, it means your power duration curve um, or your mean max power curve is significantly above your power duration curve. So imagine it visually as the red line is your power duration curve and the blue dots are your mean maximal power either being below the estimated or above the estimated. The trick towards proper management of a power duration curve is to use the unstructured testing taught in other videos in the Education Center to get these blue dots, the actual mean max power, closer to the red line over time. And this is done in an unstructured testing format once your baseline is completed. Now, to go deeper, what we offer here is just below that chart, you'll see a target for your short test, medium test, and long. For the model to function well, it needs a good short, medium, and long test. And what these charts will do is they'll tell you the time range. So this person needs a maximal one second effort. So if you look at the short test, it's always your low point, the blue dots being your low point here. They need a 43 second maximal, which you see right in this area, right? So it's just picking out that low point and they need a 42 minute maximal, which is here. Now, this one's getting pretty close, meaning I wouldn't have a high priority. If I was looking at this athlete, I would test the one second and the 43. When you get down to about negative 10, that's a pretty big gap, right? If your gaps are in the negative five to five range, you have a pretty clean model. You don't need to test unless you're outside of that. Um, and you only should test in an unstructured format every four to six weeks, meaning what I would do with this athlete is I would say, hey, you know, when you go out Tuesday, I need a max effort. Give me a max five second sprint because that'll give me my one second. And maybe on Saturday, I'll say, look, after you get really well and warmed up, do me a favor, hit a 45 second max effort and then just do your workout. So you can simply blend them into training here and there to get the numbers. Finally, you will see a power target. This is the minimum power target. This is actually just what your model suggests you can do. So if I was to give this athlete a one second target, I'm gonna be like, hey, try to break 1150 watts. If I was gonna give them a 43 second target, I'd say, hey, go try to break 439 watts. If I was gonna give them a 42 minute target, try to break 239 watts. These watts are the minimum. You want the athlete to attempt to exceed them. Thank you.